This man gets paid more than $7,000 to take photos. He's one of the most demanded wedding photographers in Ghana. His images are buttery crispy, high definition, perfect contrast, and detailed oriented. I'm talking Apple Vision Pro type images. Couples on the verge of divorce have looked at their pictures in the courtroom and just fall in love again. Believe it or not, he's the reason for the drop in divorce rates. Today, he shares the secrets of his rapid business growth and how a big setback he faced impacted his style of taking photos. As creatives, we are called creatives for a reason. Right. Right. Because we, we are supposed to create out of nothing. The least thing that you have, you should be able to make something beautiful out of it. And that is where the genius lies. All I had was just one more memory card left. Yeah. And that was a 16 gig memory card. And I was like, what does that mean for me? Every shot must count. Right. Because I have just about 300 um, pictures to take. And I was shooting to the point that I don't need to edit these pictures. Once I take the picture, it should be fire. After the wedding, the next day the clients had the pictures and right. they were shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Turnaround time was quick. Turnaround time was quick and the pictures were on point. The client was excited, like, how do you do that? Right. If you want to learn, mm. learn from people with results, right. tangible results and not yeah. um, just, you know, talk. When was the first time you held a DSLR camera? It was a birthday party in Ibri and I went with my friend who was already a photographer. His okay. name is Clay Kofi. It was night time and I was like, ah, this thing, let me just see what it is. Like, well, how is it like? And he gave me the camera. I just yeah. held it. I didn't know anything about the camera. So I was, you know, lost. So right. that was the first time I held a camera. But then that was not where the interest came from okay. for me. The interest came for me was at the point where I was able to manipulate pictures, create stuff that people were excited about, like, oh, how do you do this? Oh, can they literally will send you pictures on their phones to, you know, edit and give them a tattoo or, you know, create a piercing for them, just give them a nice effect, black and white, all those stuff. And yeah. people were really excited about it. I was like, ah, this thing, I can really do it. Later, I got the chance to invest in the camera. so. It was my the same guy, my, my brother that, mm. you know, sort of connected me to this some people on Tonaton or so they were okay. selling the camera. And I had to empty my account that time. Yeah. Um, to buy the camera, not knowing I needed a memory card, I needed a flash. <laughs> that was so crazy. I was like, yeah. ah. So I bought the camera for two weeks. I couldn't use the camera because I didn't have a memory card. Right. And then I, you know, had to gather money, struggle, find ways and means to get a memory card. And then I started mm. taking pictures. So I said taking pictures of everything I see, plants, insects, <laughs> trees, yeah. my family, you know. You were obsessed. Yeah, I was just obsessed with it. Photography, just like any other skill, uh, we know it's something you could learn. How much, you know, work did you put in? I was in school when this whole thing started. Mm -hmm. And it's always good to start somewhere where you have a lot of people around you to support you. I had like models, you know, young people who were vibrant and wanted to do stuff, wanted to explore. So a typical day, I will skip all lectures yeah. and then get into the woods. We'll be there literally from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. in the evening. Wow. Just taking pictures. And that happens almost every o day. Almost every day. <laughs> it really affected my academia in yeah. terms of uh, grades, grades and, all. and all those things. Yeah. So I, I couldn't even graduate, you know. I know that was the price I paid. For, for the young people watching <laughs> who, who know what you've become, they'll be saying that that's a small price to pay. That, <laughs> that, that, <laughs> I'd pay that price any time. <laughs> you know, because I went back to school after everything and yeah. then I had to complete yeah. to get my degree and all those yeah. things. You have to sacrifice something. But w was it difficult doing that? Because a lot of people say, you know what, I'm good. I could pay my bills. How, why do I go back to school? In in order for businesses to thrive, there are a lot of concepts you need to understand to run a relevant business. That calls for the need to study. So I had to start my whole four years again at Gempa. Mm. And like a lot of people don't know that, like when they knew me, oh, Gemma doing that, I was yeah. still going to school. Wow. Can you tell me about the very first time you got paid? For photography i think for weddings i can remember for weddings okay i had this client just reach out to me they asked me to take pictures like their wedding pictures i was shocked i was like what have they seen because <laughs> i literally that was like my first official wedding i had some wedding pictures but i just went to a wedding as a guest mm. um it was a family friend okay. and then i took 
just like three or four photographs mm. and that was like during their cake cutting and that was the only picture that i had yeah and i posted it and for these people to trust me that oh they want me to shoot there when i was really like shocked and i had to go all out for them yeah you know it was back in 2014 there about they paid me 600 cities to do that wedding okay and after that wedding and they came back to me that oh they like the pictures they want me to do their cousins own but you know they don't have money so can i do it for 200 cities okay. as they know instead of me taking the 200 cities i'd rather do it for free yeah so i did that wedding for free wow and then the next wedding came and i that was 800 cities but what made you do it for free though? I felt like um, I just wanted to sow into um, their life. And instead of taking a token for that, right. I understand the value of sowing in people's lives. So yeah. I decided to just do that for free. And since that time, every year up to date, we will shoot a wedding for free yeah. for someone, random person who will contact us probably cannot really pay yeah but then they, they are just open about it. oh we really cannot pay like so these are secrets these are things that yeah. we do that most people don't know and i hardly even share these things yeah. now people are paying huge amount of money for yeah. for us to you know shoot True. their wedding True. it's quite crazy <laughs> what would you say has been that biggest contributing factor of your success i will give credit to god beautiful absolutely because i honestly don't see like a lot of things that i do differently right from what like you know other people or my colleagues and other you're so humble do. man <laughs> it's not that but then i believe like there's that grace yeah. that exists yeah aside you know my basic understanding or my understanding in uh, photography and probably the various concepts and technicalities right. out there. When I'm editing my pictures, all throughout the editing, I'll just be playing worship, like worship songs, and you know, soaking it in and yeah. praying over the pictures before I even release them. And I can speak to some of the pictures and say, I'm giving you wings to fly, like just go to places. Yeah. And you post those pictures and those pictures will fly and like everybody will be raving about it like ah, this guy. Yeah. And people will be calling in and cries and stuff. I'm like, ah, what did I do? Yeah. For a whole season, people will make reference to those photos and book you. A lot of people struggle to, you know, even get jobs to do. And I, I can't relate. But then that is the reality on the ground. And I, I really am grateful to God for that. These are deep secrets I'm sharing with you. It I, is. I'm, maybe, it I'm is. really shocked. Yeah. But then I don't intend for this to be, you know, sort of like maybe spiritual. or But these are the secrets. These are the things it is. that we've done over a period and right. has brought results. Exactly. And I always say that if you want to learn, mm. learn from people with results, right. tangible results, and not yeah. um, just, you know, talk. Talk, right. talk is very cheap. In 2017, uh, yeah. your company bought its first car. Most people our age starts thinking about, you know, splurging on themselves rather than investing back in the business. So walk me through that decision. I think for the car, it was a marketing decision because okay. We wanted to, you know, brand the car and then once it's moving, I mean, it's just advertising. When, when I checked your website, yeah. you had high definition images on that site loading up so fast. And that wasn't on one page, yeah. on several pages. And I'm looking at all of that and I see the FAQ page that basically breaks down the frequently asked questions that clients normally have. Yeah. And, and, and it guides them on you know what they're supposed to do and what they have to expect. Don't even get me started on your rate cards that explicitly tells clients, this is what you're paying and this is yeah. what you're getting. Like the breakdown, the wording and everything is just so meticulous. How did that come about? I know for our website, it's mm. a bit sophisticated right. and very loaded in terms of information. That is because of my passion, not just to build a business, but also to have an impact on an industry. So that the idea is to put out as much information as possible, just to educate everyone mm. about photography, about turnaround times, what retouch means what client consultation means and people go to our website and like uh, even the creatives mm -hmm. like uh, other photographers they go and they're like yo jima we are dabbing your terms and conditions and 
permit us to do it. I, like, I put it there for you guys yeah. so that you can just use it as a blueprint yeah. and be able to get something yeah. going for yourself. So it's, it's just me investing in the industry right. and sharing that they have these FAQs, they have these standard procedures yeah. that, I mean, every photography firm should follow. Yeah. It's like in the banking sector, Fidelity Bank, Stambeck, they don't really need to talk much right. because we all know that when you are going to um, create an account, you need three or two passport um, pictures, national and ID, ID, and all those things. It's well, like, yeah. people know. For us, we need to be able to educate the populace as much as possible, right? so that the industry can actually grow. Mm. You cannot just get up and say, oh, I'm charging this amount of money mm. just for um, the fact that I'm a creative or the fact that mm. you are using my intellectual property. It right. has to go beyond that. You have a branch in the US and you are in Ghana. <laughs> How does that dynamic work? Although, you know, starting a new business in a, another country, is, yeah. it comes with its own challenges. challenges. And it's quite difficult, not even just penetrating the market, yeah. but then being able to maintain that quality, it's, ah. it's a bit challenging. Everyone is playing their role. Our structure is broken down from sales department to creative team, to production, to post-production, to mm. delivery, quality control, right. um, client retention, all these departments yeah. you know, run through our business. Would you say with the with Gemma Studios in the US, it's your demographics over the primarily uh, Africans? I, I think it cuts across. We okay. work with Indians, we work with um, Black Americans, mm. we work with Ghanaians. I mean, for last year, we did more of, you know, different cultures, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, um, Lebanese, Lebanese and all those things okay. in the US, okay. um, even that the Ghanaian wording there. Whoa! So, uh, I mean, that is, I think that is a big plus You're blessed. for us. You're so blessed. Could you please point out one of those key challenges that you faced in your life that has been a very definitive factor in shaping who you are today? My first major setback will be at a point in time where I had my laptop and my phone and all those yeah. things stolen. So it was just after a wedding and that was like a major, major wedding in my career because that wedding went you know, viral. And during that wedding, I did something like up to now I've never done before. Can you imagine we shot the couple with every single guest at the wedding. So we had this um, backdrop where we had every single guest, one after the other, table by table, come yeah. and stand with the couple for a picture. And just to imagine that level of effort you put into that mm. and that being lost, it's, it was a big challenge. And even at that point, you know, it was in the house and someone had to cut the window and then you know take the stuff and the camera was also there right so i think the camera was the next thing the person was going to take the fact that they didn't take the camera mm. for me yeah uh, showed that i was supposed to you know pursue this thing yes. because i i can only imagine that if they took the camera that would be the end yeah. for me i see a lot of creatives you know cuddling limitations mm. and you know making them so obvious or making them so evident in their right. life it's, it's like preventing them from being able to achieve the right. things that they want to. But then mm. we, mm. as creatives, we are called creatives for a reason. Right. Because we, we are supposed to create out of nothing. The least thing that you have, you should be able to make something beautiful out of it. And that is where the genius lies. Yeah. And I, I saw myself like going to the next one and, and I was like, oh, all I had is a camera and a 50mm and I don't have a laptop to mm. edit. All I had was just one more memory card left, yeah. and that was a 16 gig memory card. And I was like, me, what does that mean for me? Every shot must count. Right. Because I have just about 300 um, pictures to take. Right. And I don't have any computer. Now you're being very calculated. <laughs> any computer to edit. Right. So that means that I was shooting JPEG. No more RAWs. No more RAW. Mm. And I was shooting to the point that I don't need to edit these pictures. Mm. Once I take the picture, it should be fire. And I realized that the result was over, like it was just outstanding. Because <laughs> after the wedding, the next day the clients had the pictures and right. they were shocked. <laughs> Turnaround time was quick. Turnaround time was quick and the pictures were on point. The client was excited, like, 
How do you do that? Right. We, we take wedding pictures. We know we are supposed to wait like two weeks or a month to get our pictures. And the next day, you are giving us our pictures and they rave about it. You were shocked. And I think that that is what um, the limitations should do for us. You play your weakness to a strength. Yes. To be able to push us into doing exceptionally well, yeah. even in challenging moments. That is where creativity will spark. That yeah. is where creativity will be ignited and we are able to do, you know, extra things. And, and from that time, yeah. we copied that trend of, you know, after the wedding, that day mm. or the next day, you are getting at least some highlights. Yeah, some snippets. Yes, and that, that sort of like revolutionized the wedding face in yeah. Ghana because they were like, ah, why are you, like, how can you just take pictures yeah. and you're nice and the next day I'm getting them like, this guy, you've you been Gemalized. Yes, you've been Gemalized. <laughs> and it was a whole wave and people were really like excited about that yeah. because that wasn't part like, in, it wasn't a norm. It wasn't a norm. Yeah. And those are some of the disruptions that we were able to create create in that in our, in our industry right. and has come to stay. Right. Last year, your mom celebrated her, her birthday oh. and, and, and I saw, <laughs> yeah, and I saw you guys uh, did a, a photo shoot, yeah? Do you say, hey, listen, I mean, you're my mom and all, but hey, listen, I, I mean, here's your invoice and all of that. Like, you know, we, <laughs> the, the Gemma, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm just joking. But like, yeah, just tell me what, how this should come about. Yeah. Well, I, I think that um, I can never, <laughs> I can never dishonor my mom like that, yeah. you know. I'm just joking, man. <laughs> but then I, I do understand the value of family. Yeah. And I in no way take that for granted. Right. Whatever career you find yourself, you cannot downplay the impact of your family because they call the shots, yeah. whether you like it or not. Yeah. And they sort of will influence the kind of results that mm. you produce or you yeah. come up with. Whether it, they're giving you the freedom to express yourself and do what you love, yeah. or whether they're supporting and contributing um, in terms of even finances yeah. into your business or whatever thing that you're doing to your studies mm. and all those things. I mean, this is the role family plays. Even the fact that they can give you the peace of mind yeah. to be on your own and to be able to create is priceless. Very, it's priceless. Yeah. And we cannot afford to not value that enough or to yeah. share our gift with them. When it comes to business, yeah. there's a need to draw probably a line, especially for um, friends and all those things. So yeah. you don't, you know, get they don't take advantage yeah. of you yeah. and so probably in your business you can say when it comes to family and friends we give a discount of 30 percent nothing more than that yeah. now they'll appreciate that yeah. they'll value that and yeah. then they'll carry that along i started you know getting lenses and all mm. those those were challenging moments yeah. for me but as of now, I'm not thinking of lenses, I'm not thinking of cameras, because if I need a camera today, I can get it. True. If I need a lens today, it's just yeah. a snap of a finger, and I will get that. You need to be able to- But how to does it feel though, being in that position? It calls for more restraint. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm grateful that I've passed the stage where I wanted to get everything. Yeah. And really dive deep into essentialism where yeah. what is essential for me now yeah. what will make the most difference That's in my work thing. at the point i didn't have any savings all my money was in gears invested in gears and even these gears i wasn't really taking good care of them mm. they were all over the place mm. now i know that even if i need this i have to budget for it and i remember in 2022 was the most challenging time of my life in terms of finances. Here I learned the most about financial prudence, mm. about the need to save, mm. the need to invest well and I think that has helped me even up to this this year because for the most part of my life mm. I have I, I didn't have to think about it. Right. But then in 2022 that was when I just I just got married. Yeah. My wife was about to give like all those things and like expenses were just piling up. Yes, and then like I was like, oh, the time has come for me to actually learn this mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. and properly manage my finances, mm -hmm. put people in charge yeah. to make sure that your finances is 
right off point. You are calculating depreciation. You are investing well. Mm. You know you are paying your salaries on time. Know what is personal and know what is business, yeah. and even start to pay yourself. You know, and there's a need for transparency yeah. in terms of the things that you're doing, mm. what you're investing in, and all those things. So, mm. for me, that has been the progression. Mm. up to this stage. I saw uh, your alma mater, Presec, invite you back uh, to the school. You're giving speech and having programs and all of that. It's a great deal of respect for them to do that. And it, it means you are becoming someone in society that people should listen and look up to. So this all comes from building Gemma. So d does it all feel like a dream sometimes? Very interesting question, mm. but then I have learned that champions don't see the finish line. For me, yeah. I do appreciate the fact that, you know, we've come a long way, but yeah. this is just the beginning mm. of, I mean, better things mm. ahead. Mm. I remember I was in an interview like this five years ago, right. and the things that I was talking about, that I see Jima becoming an international brand. Right. I see us working on projects. And to my surprise, I was living in that five year mm. vision that I had. I want to say that again. Yeah. I know this is being recorded that yeah. the next decade we've become a household name. We have a whole complex, which is like a community for Gemma that creatives can just walk in and feel at home. They can have exhibitions there. They can have offices there. They can have conferences you know, workshops in that same space. Yeah. They can create magic. I, there's no limit to what they can create even in that space. How does it feel when you attend a wedding, not as a photographer, as a guest? Probably, you know, you're chewing on that chicken and you just spot some photographer doing something that is just absolutely wrong. Do you just go bonkers and like, what is this guy doing? Like, the, So what I'm trying to say in effect is, are you always conscious of the fact that you're looking out for photography, even when you're doing something completely different? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very interesting question. Right. Very interesting. But I think when I'm not doing weddings, I try as much as possible to not think of photography. Okay. Because if so, then I'll be absent-minded in the very thing that I'm there for. I don't really bother to think about the yeah. fact that, oh, I, I'm, what, what, what are they doing? Do no, exactly. Exactly. No, no, no. To receive from God, there's a need for you to position yourself in a particular way. The Bible says in Psalms 81, somewhere there, and it's saying that open your mouth and I'll fill it. Mm. And it means that you need to be able to find yourself in a position um, to receive from God. A lot of creatives do not even believe in what they are doing. Right. They don't even believe that what they are doing mm. can help them impact the world, can add value to their lives. They can live on that and be able to grow mm. off what they are doing. I'm just encouraging all creatives that, first of all, you need to be able to change that mindset mm. and believe in whatever value you are giving to the world because what you have is a gift what you have is a tool and then what you have is a means for you yeah. before you listen to what he said about believing in god as the driving factor of his success he had already said how much hours he had put in where he shot uh, photos you know for a whole day you'd have to put in that work and then combine that with the faith and grace of god and then it all comes now to fruition. Absolutely. You, you, you get it. And look, look at people like Gemma. I wouldn't say myself because you know, I ain't there yet. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we try to be. You yeah. know? So uh, on that note, if you're liking this conversation, make sure to hit the like button, you subscribe, so you can get more content just like this one. Until next time, my name is Ben Romain, and this is Ben Kweku, amazing guest today. And uh, that's it. Ah. <laughs>